Hi, this is Pat with Pat's Two Cents. I want you to journey with us as we go through the afternoon at a senior assisted living place. And we brought the gospel. We have been there a few times now. And we will be going on a regular basis once or twice a month in the evening, on a Sunday evening. So I want you to see how we minister to these seniors. God bless you. I hope some of the word we shared with them will bless you as well. Thank you, Lord. We praise you. And we thank you for what you're going to do in our midst today. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read from first, uh, excuse me, 2 Corinthians chapter 5. 2 Corinthians chapter 5. For we know that if our earthly house of this tabernacle would dissolve, we have a building of God and house not made of hands, eternal in the heavens. And we're going to scoot all the way down to verse 17. Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. All things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. And when it says are become new, it means are becoming new. It's ongoing. It's progressive, nonstop. We are all a work in progress. Mm -hmm. Amen? Amen? So, basically, what I feel like dealing with today, when I, I talk to the Lord, I ask Him where He wants me to go with it, what came to my mind, and Peter confirmed it this, ap this afternoon in the car, we have to learn how to love, how to show mercy, mm -hmm. how to be understanding and patient with one another. Mm -hmm. And it's difficult when we're dealing with human beings, mm -hmm. isn't it? Very difficult. Sometimes human beings can be the hardest thing on the planet to deal with. We can deal with a problem, with a flat tire. We can deal with not making enough money. But when it comes to dealing with each other, whoa, yeah. that can be a real pain in the tuchus. Yeah. <laughs> it takes God and His Holy Spirit to help us to get along at times. And there are people we can look back what the Lord was showing me is there are some of us who haven't gotten over some things that happened way back when. Mm -hmm. And it makes it difficult to forgive. It makes it difficult when we're going through our daily lives to deal with our own emotions because if you step on my corn, what am I going to do? I'm going to want to push you off my corn. I'm not trying to hurt you. <laughs> but because I'm sore, my initial response would be to push you off, which might knock you down. And I could do damage because of a sore spot. And we can do damage to each other because of our sore spots where someone hurt us back in the day. And we haven't gotten over it. And someone else hits that sore spot. And what happens? We flash out, we lash out, don't we? Mm -hmm. Our anger flares up. So we have to be careful to ask God to constantly help us get over old stuff. Help us reconcile with some of the people, whether they're alive or dead, to reconcile with them and release them from what they did to us. Release them from what they said to us. Release them. Forgive them. Clean the slate. Call a truce. Peace. Right? Because what ends up happening is, let's say that Peter looks like somebody I knew when I was a little kid. And that, that guy was a bully and he picked on me. And I see Peter walk into the room, and he reminds me of that boy that picked on me. <laughs> right? Yeah. What am I going to do? I'm going to start disliking Peter at first sight because he <laughs> looks like the bully that picked on me for two years. So 
those are the kind of things that Peter might be a beautiful brother in Christ. He's kind of a knucklehead, but he can be a beautiful brother in Christ, right? Yeah. So what happens is I'm losing out on a friendship because of something that some seven-year-old did to me when I was in elementary yeah. school. Because mm -hmm. he looks like him. <laughs> so we, a lot of times when we're dealing with each other, we can get on each other's nerves because you might say something that reminds her of a sister that always beat up on her. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm? That's true. <laughs> or she might say something that reminds you of when your mother used to criticize you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And that's something. Mm -hmm. Those old scars can cause so much separation, cause so much division. And God wants us to be reconciled to him and to each other. Right. He wants us to be at peace with each other. Right. He wants us to live in harmony with each other. So if I have a tendency to want to rear my fist back and give Peter a black eye, I've got to say, Lord, take the anger out. Lord, help me forgive. He can't help it if he looks like the bully that picked on me when I was seven. <laughs> you know what I mean? She can't help it if somebody says something to her that reminds her of her sister picking on her. You understand? So we have to ask God to help us heal. Heal those old hurts. Those old hurts can make us grumpy old men. Those old hurts can make us grumpy old women. <laughs> and we can walk around hurting other people because we're grumpy because of what somebody did to us 20 years ago. Yes. Mm -hmm. Sore spots. That's your truth. Yeah. Sore spots. That's your truth. It's so ridiculous yes. that things like that happen. Yes. For years and years there's some little thing that happened they never want to forgive or forget it. Right. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I remember my mother. I'm going to imitate my mother. She used to, she had a hard time getting over hurts. And at the time, she was not a Christian yet. And she would sit down. I, she would always poke her finger in the table. I remember <laughs> when my grandfather <laughs> stood up and and dumped me on the floor and told me to go get him something to eat and he called me that name and he did this and he did that. And her face would contort with bitterness. Wow. Yeah, the pain she felt telling me that in her 50s was the same pain she felt when it happened to her when she was six years old. Oh my. Six Isn't that something? Old. Six years old. Wow. A lot of those pains don't go away mm -hmm. because there are people who will nurture that pain. I've got a right to this. You know what you did to me? I've got a right to this. You can't tell me I've got to forgive you. It's so ridiculous. That people can't forgive and forget and, you know, love each other instead. Right. <laughs> right. Yes. So the thing to do when you can't forgive and you can't get over it, God give me the ability to, to do so. And the beautiful part is he will. He will. I, I'm going to share this and then we'll close. I remember when I, I had a relative who had offended me so deeply. And uh, this relative was, he came by to visit my father. And before that day came, I spent days and days and days asking God to give me the ability to forgive him because I did not even want to. I felt like he did not deserve my forgiveness. Not after what he did to me. <laughs> so as time went on, about three or four months I hadn't seen or heard from the person. And Christmas time, he came over to visit my father. And I opened.
opened the door. And I looked at him and I said, oh my God. I didn't tell him. I just said, Pop's in there. And I went to my bedroom and I said, Lord, how did you do that? I don't feel any more anger. I don't feel any more resentment. I'm not, I don't have the lump and the knot and all of that, the, the disdain. It's gone. How did you do that? I didn't even expect it to happen like that. So my point is, is, and now we get along great, no problem. They never apologize, but because God fixed me, I don't need the apology. When you really forgive, and God really cleans that out of you, you don't even need an apology. That's the blessing. You're free. He who the Son sets free is free indeed. Amen? So... Let's ask the Lord, let's get in the habit when people, because you know, you know, when you live with a bunch of people, there's going to be some <laughs> going on. So get in the habit, as soon as somebody gets on your nerves, Lord, take that anger out, please. Take the hurt out, please. Don't let me feel annoyed all day long because of that. It's not even important. Just get it out and release me so I can continue to live in the joy because where the presence of the Lord is there is joy amen and I want to live in your presence I don't want to live in anger I don't want to live in bitterness there's a scripture that says be careful lest the root the root of bitterness springing up trouble you and thereby many be defiled hmm. and when you are troubled when you are bitter, when you are angry, people around you get on your nerves quickly and you lash out. And many thereby be defiled. Why? Because now you're hurting other people. As the old adage says, hurting people do what? Do what? What do hurting people do? Yeah. They hurt people. Yes. So ask God to remove your hurt. And it'll be easier not to hurt others. And then we're not living in that vicious cycle of hurt on, hurt on, hurt on, hurt on. <laughs> Amen? Mm -hmm. All right. You know, kind of like the Luke 10, if you ever read Luke 10, is the Lord sent us out, right, with nothing. And he goes to go preach the gospel, like two by two. And he bring nothing, and the Lord will provide for us, you know. So we decided to go to Mexico to to minister to people. We didn't know what we were doing, but but somehow he led us to this place in, in the mountains. The home, it was a place for rehabilitation for women, right? And they let us in, and we got to minister to them. And we prayed for people, and they, you know, some people got the Holy Spirit, they got healed, mm -hmm. and they got to receive the Word of God. And we came back later on, to the room. we were invited back to actually do a service, right? And one of my brother's idea to because they're all women that we would go in there and help them because they were all hurting. They were all they've all gone through a lot, and so they've done a lot of drugs. They've done a lot of you know bad things. A lot of bad things happened to them, you know. And we decided just for the men to come up there and speak to them about forgiveness. Wow. Okay? And in the place of all the men that were hurting, that have hurt them, we stood in their place to ask for forgiveness. Beautiful. Right. And we um, we were able to like when we when we were speaking to them, like there was such a release of mm. emotions wow. when they understood that unforgiveness brought them to these places, right, oh. where they didn't know how to function anymore. I actually still have it in my wallet. Uh, I have my wallet. Like my part of the... Because I wrote down, like, he wanted me to speak, so I wrote it down. I'm going to read it. You know, sisters, before coming today, uh, the Lord wanted us to understand that we were coming to a place with sisters who are broken, hurting, and struggling. You have been hurt and used and neglected and scarred. There are many of you who still hold unforgiveness in your hearts. You... We want you to know that this is a very heavy weight to carry. It is like pouring a cup of poison 
for the one who hurt you, but you are the one that drinks it. <sighs> Unforgiveness brings death. Jesus says that if you do not forgive, he will not forgive you. Jesus wants you to be set free from this bondage. He has put it in your heart. He has put it in our hearts to stand in the place of the ones that have hurt you and ask for forgiveness on their behalf. Mm. We pray that you can find it in your hearts to forgive them and be set free, worthy to receive the forgiveness of God. Uh, and there are many other, like, you know, my other brothers talked to, and, like, there was, like, about 30 women there, and they all, like, they all, like, just had a release, like, a crying. Like, they were just in tears because there's a release of understanding and healing in that moment, you know. And they understood a lot of things. That forgiveness has put them in bondage. You know, it is, it's, it's a poison that you drink. Yeah, unforgiveness. You know, you're pouring out for that yeah. person, but you're, you're drinking it yourself because it doesn't do any good. It doesn't do anything to that person, you know. That bitterness will bring you down all the time. And so, that's, that's I mean, God, is, God, God came here to set us free, right? And that's one of the things he says. Unforgiveness is bondage. Yes. It is. Yes. So, like, I challenge you today to, like, the things that you have in your past, things that people have done, your parents, even, even to the, like, there are some people, even to their dying breath, say, I will never forgive them. You know, mm -hmm. there was a guy in Mexico that we saw him. He was working on the streets and he had a big hernia coming out. <laughs> and he was still working and we were about to pray. And I knew in my heart that he was going to get healed. But when we asked him, do you have any unforgiveness? He said, I will never forgive them. And he walked away. Wow. You know, what, what the cause of sometimes the cause of physical manifestation of the things that are going on spiritually Yes. Right? That's it affects us. Mm -hmm. We don't understand it. Yes. When you feel like this is your right to have that pain that you carry, it's like why? Right. Why carry it? You know, God let God carry it. Let God put it on exactly. his back. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Because he's already put everything on his back. Yes. Right? He put all the weight That's of right. the world on his back. Let him carry it so that you can be set free. That's my message. Amen. Sure. And one of the other brothers like asked him for some help because they did cons they did some like home construction and things like that. And so yes, but during that time, cause this is a this is a more mature brother in Christ. But he was so pressured and he was so uh, stressed out by doing this this home remodel mm -hmm. by himself. Like when he had the younger brother helping him, he he yelled at him, you know, because he did something wrong and he got mad and he got angry, right? And then he felt like okay, so then he. He left. He left the fellowship and he went and he couldn't, he didn't, didn't want to have anything to do with the fellowship anymore. But we, I've been praying for him and I've been, you know, and the Lord just brought him back uh, to, to a place where he, he understood what happened, you know. And we were actually able to come together and in fellowship, even with the with the with the brother that that yelled at him, he was able to say sorry, and then they were able to come together. It was it was so beautiful because of that forgiveness. Like the bond got stronger again. You know, like right. God is really good when you pray for those kind of things. Like yes. it was just beautiful. I don't know. Yes, yeah, I did not explain it. Like, it yes. Was, yeah. Wow. Wow. And, uh, to speak life to the leg right now. Yes, Father. In the right name now. of Jesus. Come on, right now in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Jesus name.